Okay, so um, this little drawing I'm taking here from, from something on the website under Diving Bells called The Mirror of Perception, and I'll put a link to it at the bottom of this video. So um, here in the, in the wrong mind um, is sin, which means separation is necessary. In order for me to exist on my own, there has to be sin. And uh, along with the sin is guilt and fear. So um, this is unbearable. The sin, guilt, and fear is absolutely unbearable. And so uh, our ego advisor says, well, I have a solution for you. What you need to do is split yourself off into these two parts. So you'll be this fearful, innocent one over here. You'll be the victim. And um, we'll split off the guilt and we'll put it over here. Well, it says the same thing to each one. So this one thinks that it's the victim and you're the victimizer. And this one thinks he's the victim and you're the victimizer. So we're looking across here. Now the mirror, um, the Course says your brother is the mirror of your perception of yourself as long as perception lasts. So since we come from the same thought up here, and we're split off parts of this same thing, which is split off parts of this dreaming self here. Um, and that's why we say there's only one of us, but there is an illusion of many down here. Uh, and we're just talking about two right now. And so the mirror says, um, uh, when I look at you and I think I see something that I don't like, it's really coming from the sense of sin up here. I take the sense of sin, I put it over here, I project it over here onto you, and then um, I see it in you. But I'm always looking in the mirror of my own self-hatred. Always. So I just thought of a simple little example. Let, let's say that um, you're a person who's very neat and tidy. And um, you, maybe you have a teenager who's a slob, or you have a coworker who's a slob and just throws things everywhere and takes things out and doesn't put them away. And we know, I think everybody knows how that can be uh, a little seemingly upsetting, whatever. So you think, uh, well, how can I be looking at myself? I'm not a slob. I'm tidy and neat. Okay, well, our slobbery is up here. <laughs> We're a total mess up here. The chaos is, of sin is up here. Well, I try to get to push away, to deny, uh, to uh, refuse to look at the, the chaos of sin by organizing my life and planning everything out and having everything neat and tidy. So if I look over here and I see somebody who seems to be a slob on the surface, I'm really looking at my own guilt that feels the chaos up here. So I think if I can make you straighten up your act, put your, you know, clean your room, or you're grounded for a week, you know, if I can do that and bully the other person into cleaning things up, or I can tell on this person to the boss and say, I just can't get any work done because this person is so slovenly. <laughs> so, so that's what we're always doing. We're always taking our own self-hatred, our sense of sin, putting it on the other person, and then we see it in them. But every time we do that, um, we know it's a lie, so it just ex actually brings more guilt. And then the mirror is, you know, there's that line in the, in the Bible about um, looking through a glass darkly. That's what we're doing. This is a distorting mirror here that... Um, uh, that we look through that just distorts everything we see and uh, we don't realize that that other person is a mirror and uh, which I if we're talking about mirrors I have to talk about my favorite fairy tale the Snow Queen <laughs> <laughs> so Hans Christian Andersen who was writing back in the um, mid to late 19th century wrote the Snow Queen which bears no relationship whatsoever to what Walt Disney did with it. So the most brilliant introduction to um, the Snow Queen, which is a story, and I think it's in seven parts, um, 
but the brilliant introduction is that he says the devil made a mirror and the mirror's trick is that it distorted everything that it saw and um, everything that was reflected in it. So if anybody was good and made them look evil or stupid or ugly, and if anybody was ugly and made them look wonderful. Mm -hmm. So um, he and his, uh, his minions, his little devils, all took the mirror up to heaven. They flew up to heaven and they were gonna mock God and his angels with this mirror by showing them their version of what God looked like. And um, they got laughing so hard in their mockery and derision that, that the mirror fell out of their hands and fell to earth and splintered into trillions and trillions of pieces. Those little pieces flew all over the world and some of the pieces got in our eyes and some of the pieces got in our hearts. Now, isn't that profound? I think that that's just Very. wonderful. <laughs> that, that he was um, tuning in to that very true idea of what's going on here in the world. We're so sure that our perception is accurate. And uh, all we're looking at is the contents of our own mind that's hidden behind this veil of amnesia that goes across here. Because when we split ourselves and we said, now forget that you did it, you know, like a hypnotist will give you a post-hypnotic, you will not remember that you, that you originally were one. You can now believe that you are two, looking in the mirror. So there's another mirror that the Course talks about, which is over in the right mind. And um, I should probably bring the other chart up. So we think if we just fix that person or yes. this situation, that everything will be, will be happy and everything will be good again. Exactly, exactly. You're the problem, not me. But then something else comes up. <laughs> right, right. You've got to find something else wrong somewhere. <laughs> okay, so there's also a, uh, a mirror up here in the mind. And the Course says we have to clean the mirror. Because if we clean the mirror, then it's going to reflect this beautiful light that's over here in the right mind. And then those reflections will come through our form, our human form. And um, just that's why it's a wonderful practice, just to practice kindness. Mm -hmm. Because when you practice kindness, you are reflecting this light up here. Uh, when you cut somebody some slack, you are... When you decide, I don't have to get upset about this. You know, maybe I've been getting upset about this same um, issue with my family member for, for 30 years, but I could change my mind. I don't have to. I can remember that they're not bodies any more than I'm a body. They are the same as me. They have a mind. They're dreaming and they're doing the very best that they can. So uh, cleaning the mirror of the mind means looking at all of this stuff over here and saying, I really don't want that anymore. And when we do that, when, they, when we are kind to them, or we decide that nothing they did um, could hurt me. Right, uh, nothing like that, can take my peace away. Yeah, it, it uh, actually lets them understand that there's nothing wrong with them. Exactly, exactly. And, and their relief then gets Reflect it back to you, and the two of you learn the lesson together. Wonderful. So, wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> okay, that does it for the mirror, and now we're going to go on to the bridge. <laughs>